the first steps in designing an exhaust system is considering what it's for. We're there to evacuate the exhaust from a motor, so we have to know is it the right size to accommodate the power level that we have. So determining whether you need a two and a quarter, two and a half, three inch or larger is one of the first steps. Once you get to that part, it's then a matter of do you want to put something on that fits with stock geometry suspension, stock frame, or are you really going to go exotic and put in parts that are either custom fabricated or something that's going to basically come out of a box that's made to bolt onto factory parts. When you've determined that your goal is to make a truly custom car, our custom builder kits are usually the direction you're going to take. It provides you with the most options as long as you have the means to put it together. If you're talking basics of exhaust, I would say there's a few things that you need to look at. First and foremost on the exhaust is does it route in a place where it's going to be free of any kind of interference? And you have to take in consideration that it's, you're talking about a stainless steel that once it gets heated actually expands. So you're going to have growth rate. Make sure that there's enough space for the exhaust system to move back once the car started and reaches full temperature. Also consider that when you have bends that that growth rate is going to move up and around as well with that bend. So you're going to have to make sure your isolators and the, the types of uh, devices you're using to mount the system have a little bit of give, otherwise you're going to start cracking all the mounts that you've welded to the exhaust. After you've done that, you want to make sure the routing is away from things that could be hurt by the temperature. Uh, when you're talking about the tube alone or the muffler, the muffler has more insulation, it can be closer to objects that are more sensitive to heat. The tubing in itself at full throttle without a whole lot of air moving around it may actually be a consideration for issue on things that are flammable. So fuel lines, watching out for brake lines, oil lines, those are all things you need to take in consideration. And obviously when you're talking rubber lines versus metal lines, we have to give those even more space. In welding exhaust parts, there's a couple different ways you can go. Uh, you can definitely stick with a MIG, it's probably the most easy way to get things going, but if you're looking at spacing and keeping it clean and looking for a visual aesthetic, you can move to a TIG. And there's still, yet again, because we're talking about thinner material, you can do additive welding where you're going to use a rod, or you can try to fuse them together. In the process of using fusion, though, you need to make sure that your cuts are accurate, that you have a true tangent line cut, or at least making sure that the mating surface make as much contact as you can. You'll see a variety of different uses when I typically build an exhaust system depending on need. Some of the additive welding is where there's strength needed, and some of the fusion welding is where the two pipes join and you don't need the extra strength, but you're looking for a good seal. At the end of the day, what you choose is based upon what the necessity of the exhaust system is and the desire for the appearance that you want.